So in reading through the steps to solve a quadratic word problem, I want you to underline, yes, in number four, that we may need to reject an answer if it doesn't fit the problem. Fit meaning it doesn't make sense. So because a quadratic equation, you can have two solutions, one positive and one negative. If you are looking for distance, or if you're finding length, or if it says in a question you're looking for two consecutive positive integers and you get a negative solution, you have to reject that negative solution and only work with the positive solution. If you're solving a problem and it's, you end up with um, two numbers and it wants two consecutive odd integers and one of your solutions or root is even, you have to reject the even and work with the odd. So we really have to pay attention to the roots and what they're asking for in the problem. Okay? So steps are all the same. If, it's a, if you can set up a problem with a picture, instead of writing that statements, you can utilize the picture. So go ahead and read number one and see if you can write your lead statements. So it says, in this classroom you have 36 seats arranged in rows with the same number of seats in each row. I want you to underline this sentence here. This is the sentence that you'll use to write your let statements. It says, the number of seats in each row is five more than the number of rows. So they start to tell you how many seats you have, but do you know the number of rows that you have? No. So let's let x equal the number of rows. Then this part here, the number of seats is five more than the number of rows. Algebraically, what would be that let statement for the number of seats? Sarah? It's not going to be five plus x. More than means to... And so it's going to be either 5 plus x or x plus 5. Addition is commutative, okay? So you can change the order and get the same thing. I like to write it in terms of x first. So x plus 5 is the number of seats. And to get the total number of seats, you take how many seats you have in each row and then multiply by the number of rows that you have. So our equation, after you write your let statements, is going to be x times x plus 5. This is the number of rows times the number of seats. How many seats total did it say we had? 36. 36. So set it equal to 36. The product, so x times x plus 5, what's that binomial? Let's raise your hand if you want. Sarah? x squared What's the other term in the binomial? Plus 5x equals 36. Whenever you see the degree 2, you know it's going to be a quadratic equation. You want to put it in standard form and then use one of your methods to solve algebraically. Completing the square, quadratic formula, and factor. I'm going to factor in the notes at any time I can factor because that's the shortest and quickest. So subtract the 36 to get it in standard form so that it's equal to 0. And now we're looking for the factors of a negative 36 that combine to a positive 5. On the calculator, you can type in, go to your y equals, and it would be 36 over x to see all the factors of 36. Chris? 4 and 9. Do you know the signs? Yes. Positive 9, negative 4, because a positive 9 times a negative 4 is a negative 36, and a positive 9 plus a negative 4 is a positive 5. Draw the lines. We have one root of 4 and the other root of negative 9. And since x is the number of rows, can you have a negative number of rows? No. So this is, this is an extraneous solution. Okay, so we just simply cross it out and write reject. So x is 4. The question says find the number of rows, and we have how many rows? 4 rows. Now, with the person next to you, you're going to fill in. We'll do 3 for each. This is review. 
So I want you to discuss what the let statements were for integer, consecutive integer. So that's an example would be like 3, 4, 5, or negative time, 10, negative 9, negative 8. Those are consecutive integers. What would the let statements be? We'll do three. Discuss with the person next to you. What would represent the first consecutive integer, the second consecutive integer, and the third consecutive integer? I'm going to abbreviate since we don't have much room. And do the same on the right side for even or odd. Even and odd consecutive integers. Even would be something like 2, 4, 6. Odd would be something like negative 9, negative 7, negative 5. What are the let statements? So consecutive, if you don't know the first or the starting number, and the next two numbers, don't they depend on what the first number is? So we can let x equal the first, and then to get the next one, you add 1. So x plus 1 would give you the 4, and then 3 plus 2 is going to give you the third. So they differ by 1. Even and odd differ by 2. So if x is the starting, what's the next one that follows? Michelle? X plus 2 then. X plus 4. Good. So down at the example, we've done these already in linear equations, okay, in that unit with word problems. Now what's going to be different, instead of adding the numbers, product means we're going to multiply and we'll end up with an x times x to give us the x squared. So we have the product of two consecutive, okay, so let x equal the first. And then because it's consecutive, x plus 1 is the second. And I'm just going to abbreviate in our notes c and i. If it was a state test, you want to write it out. Okay? Product means you're going to multiply. So we're going to take x and multiply by x plus 1. Order doesn't matter. Okay, you can do x plus 1 times x. We just typically see the monomial in front of the binomial. And it says that product is, is your equal symbol, 56. So then x times x and x times 1. What is the product? What's the binomial for x times x plus 1? Gabe? x squared plus x. x squared plus x equals 56. Subtract the 56 to get to 0 on the right side so that it's in standard form. And we have x squared plus x minus 56. It can be factored, so we're going to factor it. Factors of a negative 56 that combine to a positive 1. It multiplies to a negative number, so the signs are going to be different. So what two numbers multiply to 56, Gabe, and add to 1? 7 and 8. 7 and 8. We want the 8 to be positive, so we have a positive 8 minus 7 to give us the positive 1. Draw the line, and we have a root of negative 8 and 1 of 7. Do we reject one answer here? No. No. Well, at least not yet. We don't know if we have to. So if, okay, so if we have, so when x is negative 8, what's x plus 1? Negative 7. Good. It says the product has to be a positive 56. So if you multiply negative 8 times negative 7, do you get a positive 56? Yeah. So that works. When x is 7, what's x plus 1? So plug in the 7, 7 plus 1, 8. And is, is 7 times 8 also 56? 
Yes. So we have two possible solutions. Find the integers. The integers are um, negative 8 and negative 7 or um, 7 and 8. So we didn't have to reject it all there because both solutions are roots. Made sense. But I didn't just stop here and circle my solutions. I kept going and answered the question. So make sure you do that as well. Next one. The school is building a rectangular soccer field. So let's draw a rectangle. Okay, so here's our soccer field. It says it has an area of 6,000 square yards. So the area of the rectangle is equal to 6,000 yards squared. Well, what is the area of a rectangle? How did they compute or arrive at 6,000? What did they do, Sarah? They multiplied the length times the width. So we need these two dimensions, length times width. So we can make a note, area is length times width. In the question it said the soccer field must be 40 yards longer than its width. So since we don't know its width, we're going to leave the width as x. 40 yards longer would be what algebraic expression, Dan? 40 yards longer. So say the width was 10. 40 yards longer would be? Yep, be 50. So good, this is x plus 40. So we're going to, where the area is, okay, we're going to do length times width. So x times x plus 40 equals 6,000. The binomial would be x squared plus 40x. And then we'll have to subtract the 6,000 to make it equal to 0. This could be a tough one. You could also eliminate some of the zeros with 40 and um, 6,000, take one away. So what are the factors of a negative 6,000 that add to a positive 40? It can be factored. Remember, I said I'm going to factor when we can. So on your calculator, we know it multiplies to a negative. So we have to have a positive and negative for our signs. What two numbers multiply to a negative 6,000 and add to a positive 40? You have it? Yeah, positive 100 and negative 60. Positive 100, negative 60 is correct. So positive 100, 100 minus 60 is 40, and then the product is negative 6,000. Draw the line, we have a root or a solution of negative 100, and then a solution of 60. In this case, are we going to reject a solution? Why? Yes, we will. We can, yeah, there's no such thing as negative 100 yards, okay? So we're going to reject the negative because that represented our width. So we reject. And then it says determine the dimension, so it wants both length and width. So our width is 60 yards. And then our length, 60 plus 40, is 100. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and read through four, underline keywords, and see if you can answer question or part A. Mm -hmm. Record. All right. So changing the one unit, yes, from meters to feet, because there was a typo in the question. I like to, I erased the diagram that you have. I like to start from scratch. Okay. And this might make more sense. So there's a garden that's six by 12 feet. And then you're going to create a walkway around the whole thing. Or just part of it? The whole thing. So I'm going to start. We're going to have a walkway that's going to go here. Now, 
is the walkway the same width all the way around or does it change and get smaller? It's the same. It stays a uniform width. So all the way around, we're going to have the same width. Okay? And that width is what? X from the question. Now, to start here now and walk all the way across to here, we're going to have this width of what? X plus the 12 to go from here all the way over. And then what else do I need to add in? Another X. So you were very close. It just should be 2X plus 12 for that dimension. And then the other dimension, say, again, we start here, and we want to walk all the way up. It's how many units for this piece? X. We walk 6, and then another X would be 2X plus 6. And it said we have a total of the walkway and the garden, so all together, 216 square feet. We're going to work on B last, the description or how we came up with this. Right now, we're going to take and do C, determine and state the width of the walkway in meters. So determine and state the width of the walkway was X. So we have to find X. So we have... 2x plus 12 times 2x plus 6. We have to distribute. So allowed, what's 2x times 2x? Nope, we got a 2 times 2. 4x squared. 2x times 6. We're multiplying and distributing 12x. Now distribute the 12 through 12 times 2x. Good, and then last, 12 times um, 6, 72. I forgot to bring down right here the 216. But we're going to want to subtract the 216 to get it set equal to 0, okay, so that it's in standard form. Combining all of our like terms, is there any term to combine with the 4x squared? No. So let's bring it down. We combine 12x and 24x to get, good, and then minus 72 minus 216. Now, this can be factored, so we're going to factor it. Is there a greatest common factor? We want to check that first before we look yeah. at the trinomial of 4, yes. So we're going to pull out a greatest common factor which is one set of parentheses, and then we'll move it up here. Um, divide this by 4 to get the quotient, or ask yourself, 4 times what is 4x squared? So x squared plus, our middle term, 9x, and then minus 36. So now we want to factor. Factors of 36 that combine to a positive... 9. What multiplies to a negative 36? We know signs are going to be different because it's a negative. It is 12 and 3. Very good. So which is positive? Do you know, John? The 12. Good. Positive 12 minus 3 adds to a positive 9 multiplies. So we have the root, or not a root because 4 doesn't equal 0. We have a solution of negative 12 and then a solution of 3. Is there any answer that doesn't make sense here? Negative the negative 12. Yeah, if you just plug it in here, 2 times the negative 12 gives you a negative 24, plus 12 gives you a negative length. We don't want that. So we have to reject the negative. And then if x is 3, determine and state the width of the walkway in feet, it's going to be our answer 3 feet. So we're going to practice using vocab. We're going to go back and answer part B now. So take a minute. You can discuss it with those around you. We'll see if we can have somebody share the answer. How would you explain or describe how we arrived at the equation that models our solution?
So part B. Okay, so in purple, okay, with a purple pen for part B, that describes how you come up with the dimensions. And then in green, describes how we came up with the equation that states that area is length times width, and we need to multiply the length and the width to, and set it equal to the total area of 216. With your common core responses or explanations, yeah, be very detailed and very thorough and write step by step. You can even bullet. You don't have to set it up as a paragraph or even write in complete sentences. Okay, it just has to follow logically. Mm -hmm.